So today I'm going to be talking about 3D printing and the 3D printers from Stratasys. And 3D printing is one of those technologies that gets talked about a lot and many people consider it to be an emerging technology, something that has appeared in the last few years. But they're actually completely wrong. So 3D, techno 3D printing has actually been around for decades now. And the technology has been giving companies, large and small, opportunities for things like lifelike design validation with photorealistic appearances, functional prototyping, low volume end use parts, and much, much more. This gives them the leg up on competition by saving money, reducing lead times, and streamlining the iterative design process. Now, 3D printing isn't done growing by any means though, and the technology continues to increase in performance and overall capability. On the forefront of these developments is Stratasys, who we are probably partner with at CATI, which is why today I'm going to take you through some of the new products and technologies Stratasys has released this year so far. So a quick run through of what I'm going to be talking about. I'm going to give you a, a brief introduction about who Stratasys is, a little technology overview about 3D printing and the different technologies that Stratasys offers and how they work. And then I'll run you through the three printer lineups, including the FDM, or Fused Deposition Modeling, Polyjet, and stereolithography. So who is Stratasys? Well, Stratasys are the inventors of Fused Deposition Modeling, or FDM, and they invented that in the late 80s. And because of that, they have been at the forefront of this technology movement. So they've been a leader in the industry for over 30 years. They've got a worldwide presence with headquarters in Israel as well as in Eden Prairie, Minnesota. And CATI is proud to be the largest Stratasys reseller in North America. So let's look at the type of uh, the types of technologies that they offer. So the three main technologies are fused deposition modeling, FDM. This is kind of what most people think of when they think of 3D printing. Then they have Polyjet, which is kind of like an inkjet printer, except with a Z-axis. And then there's stereolithography, which is actually one of the oldest technologies that Stratasys has recently gotten into now that a couple patents have uh, ran out. And so I'm going to go into a little more detail on these individual technologies uh, here. So again, Stratasys was actually the inventor of FDM technology, and this is the most common type of 3D printing technology. It's what you see in most of the hobbyist, hobbyist machines, although not nearly at the level of quality as Stratasys, and Stratasys also has soluble supports with their FDM technology, meaning you can do things like overhangs without any issue. Now, to do this, the filament is heated up and extruded through a nozzle, kind of like a hot glue gun. This nozzle then draws the profile of the part layer by layer, and they are fused together. They're nice, strong, tough parts, which makes them great for functional prototypes, uh, end use parts, some quick form fit validation, some jigs and fixtures, and a whole bunch of other uses that our clients come up with. 
So a little bit closer look at PolyJet. Like I said, this is very similar to an inkjet printer. It's got multiple uh, ink heads that jet the resin in very thin layers, and then as it passes, a UV light cures the resin in little layer by layer, and then it builds up. One of the really awesome things about this, which you can see from that animation, is that you can print multiple, multiple materials as well as multiple colors at the same time mixed together. So that way you can do things like get full color parts with photorealistic imagery as well as mixing different materials to get different flexibilities as well as different physical properties to represent other things like ABS. And that makes them perfect for high detail design validation among, of course, a bunch of other applications as well. Now, stereolithography, again, this has been around for a few decades now, and essentially a laser cures a very fine layer on a vat of resin. And then as this layer is cured on the platform, the platform drops down a tiny increment. It is then, the resin is then smeared back across that top surface where the resin's been cured, and then another layer is drawn with that laser. And now you might be looking at that diagram and see scanning galvanometers, and that's a very fancy word for mirror on a servo motor. So it's essentially just a mirror that reflects and turns so that it can direct the laser to draw that profile. Stereolithography has a whole bunch of different specialized resin types, which make it good for a whole bunch of different purposes, like end-use parts, prototyping, and one of the really cool things is that it's perfect for investment casting molds. And I want to take a, a quick moment to talk about the material types between FDM and PolyJet and SL. So in FDM, they use thermoplastics. They're thermosoftening plastics, and they start solid, but as you use heat, they become malleable and can melt. And once they've cooled off, they then return to be a solid. And you can repeat this process as much as you want. However, this is not the case at all with the photopolymers from PolyJet. Photopolymers with PolyJet and SL are thermoset. They're generally liquids until they're cured with some sort of process, like a chemical process, or in the case of our printers, light or a laser. But once this curing process has started, you can never go back to that pre-cured state. So just remember that thermoplastics can be, you know, melted down and reused, while thermosets, they cannot be melted, which makes them, you know, higher temperature durable, but they won't melt, but they will burn or turn into ash. So just uh, wanted to throw that information out there. So now looking at the FDM lineup, we haven't come up with too much new this year, so I'm going to be just doing this at a mostly high level uh, and then go into a couple spotlights for a couple of the materials to maybe pique your interest a little bit. If there's something that you want to know more information about when I do, you know, kind of do these high level summaries, please feel free to reach out to us and we'd love to talk about uh, if something would be applicable to you and your solution. So on the engineering side, we have the F123 series. These are smaller printers compared to the Fortis series, the production series, and they come with standard and engineering plastics. You start off at the bottom with the F120, 
which has a 10 by 10 by 10 build volume, and then you go all the way up to the 370 with a 14 by 10 by 14 build volume. As you increase through that range from the 120 to the 170, 270, and 370, you add different capabilities and different materials. So the F120 can only do ABS and ASA to standard plastics that actually serve uh, most customers very well, but once you get up to the 370, you have a much larger array of materials as well as a more powerful software suite called Insight, which you can delve into your model layer by layer and decide how you want it built. Within the, one, the F123 series, the 370 is the only one that has that Insight capabilities, but within the Forda series, that is all, they are all capable of using Insight. Speaking of the Forda series, these are larger, higher capability uh, machines with larger build volumes and also larger capabilities when it comes to materials. So you're going to still have all those standard and engineering plastics, but you're also going to have some high performance plastics, which I'll go into in a little bit. So you have the Fortis 380 MC and the Fortis 380 Carbon Fiber Edition, which I'm sure you can understand where that name came from. It comes from, it can also print uh, nylon carbon fiber, which I'll go into again in just a little bit. So the Ford is 450, and then all the way up to the F900, which has a 36 by 24 by 36 build volume. So you can get really nice large parts for either production or jigs and fixtures and things like that with very high grade plastic. So I'm going to take a, a little bit of a spotlight on some of these materials. These are just a very brief collection of some of the, the materials that we offer through Stratasys. So if there's something that you're interested in, in us uh, to see if there's, there's something that works for you better, please feel free to ask. And several of these also have different flavors as well that have slightly different capabilities. So ASA, on the uh, standard plastics, I might as well start left and go to the right. ASA is similar to ABS, which is a very common plastic, and it's, it's nice, tough, tough, and durable, but compared to ABS, it's UV resistant, so it's going to hold its color over extended UV, UV exposure, and that also makes it great for things like printing these headbands, which we did for the COVID-19 uh, relief. Now, ABS is kind of a standard, but we also have ABS M30, which is 25 to 75% stronger than standard ABS material, and it's great for giving realistic functional test results along with smoother parts and finer feature details compared to ABS. Now, if we move to engineering plastics, these are a little higher performance and have a little a little something special in with them usually. So Duran was released late last year and is a nylon-based thermoplastic similar to Delrin. It's really tough, dimensionally stable, and it's got a lubricious surface. So it's got a low coefficient of friction, which reduces wear and marring. So it's great for tooling purposes and things like that. Then we have PC or polycarbonate. It's higher strength and toughness compared to ABS, making it great for a huge range of applications where standard plastics just don't give you enough performance, something like a blow mold. Then we have the high performance area. And again, these are just a couple that I, I picked out. We've got the Nylon 12 CF, which I you know, hinted at a little bit earlier. And that is a nylon impregnated with chopped carbon fibers. So this gives the material fantastic strength to weight properties and actually has the best stiffness out of any of the materials that Stratasys offers. It can even replace metal components so you'll save weight while maintaining the strength as well as getting all the advantages 3D printing where you can use very strange geometry and things like that 
that would be very difficult with traditional manufacturing. And then last but definitely not least, we have Ultem, which is a very strong material, and it is FST, or Flame Smoke Toxicity Certified, making it ideal for aerospace applications. And there are even uh, aerospace certified uh, batches of the material that are tracked so that when aerospace industry companies use them, they can have that, that piece of paper making sure that their batch of material is perfect and going to perform exactly the way they want. Now looking at the Polyjet lineup, we have the Connex series, which you can use a couple different materials and blend them together. You have the Connex 1, 2, and 3, which can use 1, 2, and 3 uh, model materials respectively. You have the Object 1000, which you can do very large parts with. And then you have the J series. And that's the newer stuff that I'm going to be talking about mostly within this presentation. So if we just take a, a quicker look at the, or a more in-depth look at the J series, you see that we have the J835 and 850. That's kind of the flagship of this series. And then you have the J826, which is very cool. It's a little smaller than the 35 and 50, 835 and 850, but you maintain almost all the functionality. And then brand new, publicly announced yesterday, we have the J55, which is really designed for office use for design. And of course, I'm going to go into more detail about these. So the J850 and 835, they deliver unmatched product realism with over 500,000 different colors that you can create by mixing all those different materials that I was talking about. 2,000 of those are Pantone validated. So when you look at your design on the screen and say, I want this Pantone color, you know exactly what it's going to come out as when it's come off the printer. That way you don't have any guesswork between your coworker, you know, across the country and your screens being slightly different and the design looking slightly different on the screen, you know exactly what it's going to appear as. To do this, it has eight material bays, seven of which are model materials, which is one more than the previous generation. And among the new materials that it can do are Vero Ultra Clear, which you can see in that little model with the hand. It's completely crystal clear, so it's great for uh, clear parts where you're you know, mimicking glass and things like that. Then we have the Agilus 30 black, white, and clear, which you can mix with rigid materials to get different durometers and different stiffnesses, as well as different colors. And then we have digital materials, which you actually are doing when you're mixing Agilus and a rigid material. Essentially, a digital material is just mixing two base materials and then getting a second material that is uh, a better, it has better performance or uh, different properties that are desired, like digital ABS, which is extra tough compared to some of the other uh, rigid materials. And it can be used for things even like plastic injection molds. So that's a, a really cool capability that you have. They've got nice large build volumes. So the 850 has a 19 by 3 by 15 by 8 inch build volume. The 835 is just slightly smaller at about 14 by 14 by 8 inches. And you can get really fine detail with layer thicknesses down to 0 0.00055 inches or just over half of a thousand. 
Now, if you want to print a little faster, you don't need quite that level of quality, which most of the time customers don't. You can print at uh, larger layer thicknesses to speed up the process a little bit. We also have a draft gray uh, model material that is new for this series, which is a slightly cheaper material, and you can print quick draft parts faster if you just want to you know, get something in your hand and see how it feels or what the geometry is looking like, and you don't need that photorealistic appearance. Now, the H26, which I was talking about earlier, it's for those who don't need the size of the 835 or 850, but you still want that power. You have eight model bays or eight material bays with seven model materials again, but you're just going to have a smaller build volume of 10 by 10 by 8. This is going to cover a lot of people's needs for their prototypes and things like that. So you can print things like that shift knob with photorealistic graphics wrapped around your print so that wood grain and that picture up at the top were all 3D printed at the same time. You can even do things like overmolding. The leather on that, that knob is actually a mixture of that flexible agilis material and rigid material to kind of simulate the feel of leather. And then in that middle picture, you can see the mixture of color and flexible materials to get different shades as well as different stiffnesses. And now, talking about the brand new J55, like I said, this is really designed with the designer in mind. Not necessarily the engineer, but the designer. So it's great for just standard office use. It has a really small footprint. It's really quiet and it's got a filtering device which gives it no odor or strange fumes or anything like that. And what's really cool about this printer is unlike every other printer basically, where the printer head moves, on this printer, the build tray moves. So now we have a circular build tray that rotates around, which streamlines the printing process, giving better print time. You can print five model materials at once, now, you can't do flexible materials or, or mix flexible into the, the model, but you're still going to get that photorealism with Pantone validated colors and high quality uh, imagery. So you can still get prototypes much quicker than by outsourcing them and understand what your design is really going to look and feel like when you're done. That's going to save you time, money, and it's also going to keep all your intellectual property in-house. Now, a quick note about the build volume. You have a build volume of over 1,000 cubic centimeters, but the largest part that you can do is kind of difficult to pin down because of your circular build tray that you are using. So you can have a really long part, but it's got to be really skinny to fit around that curve. Now, if you have some blocky parts that are, you know, pretty square, you can have several chunky ones lined up around that uh, circumference. So you can still fit a whole bunch of different parts on it. It's just a kind of different layout compared to uh, your standard XY build tray. That being said, the GrabCAD software makes it very simple to arrange your parts and make sure that you're building the, the quickest and most reasonably as possible. Now going into stereolithography, we have the V650 Flex. Now this is going to allow you to print very large parts with very fine details. So it's got a really nice big build volume of 20 by 20 by 23 inches. So huge compared to almost any of the, the FDM printers, as well as much larger than the PolyJet printers, other than the 1,000, of course, from Objet. 
and then you have layer thicknesses down to 4 thousandths of an inch. So you're going to get really nice, fine features with very large parts possible, or you can print a whole bunch of parts. There's also the open bat system, which allows you to use any resin that is rated to 355 nanometers, and that's just talking about the wavelength of the laser that is being used to cure that resin. You have adjustable vat sizes depending on what part size you need to print. So if you don't need that, that full 20 by 20 build volume, you can uh, ditch the full vat size for a half or even a quarter, which allows you to reduce the amount of investment up front that you'll need to buy the resin material to start printing. So you can use less material at the start and still get your printing process started. Now, I mentioned that you can use any 355 nanometer resin by talking with either us or Stratasys or even DSM Somos to develop profiles with this printer. But we have partnered with DSM Somos to give a whole bunch of uh, good resins already. So here are four. Uh, we have the Somos Watershed XC. That's that far left picture. And it gives you really nice clarity while being very rigid, rigid and humidity resistant. Because of these properties, it is the most popular stereolithography resin out there. But if you need something that's a little more tough and durable, we have the DSM Somos Next, and that's that second picture. It's opaque, so you don't have that clarity if you wanted that. But it is more durable, more impact resistant, so it's great for general use parts. And then I mentioned investment casting earlier, and that's where the Somos Element resin really shines. With the Element resin, you can print parts that are essentially hollow with this resin that, again, it doesn't melt when you pour in hot metal. It burns away. And Element is designed to have very low ash, so it's not going to add any impurities into your casting, as well as it's antimony free. Now, antimony is a heavy metal that, when introduced to uh, casting alloys, can uh, taint the, the, com the composition of the alloy, thus changing the properties of it. So, by having none of that in this resin, you eliminate any of those impurities being introduced to your casting. So that's absolutely fantastic. And then last but not least, you have the Somos Perform, which is actually ceramic based. So it's very hard, very heat resistant, and chemical resistant. So it's great for things like under the hood usage or wind tunnels, anywhere where you're going to need that high temperature, uh, high strength, and chemical resistance. You can get really nice large parts that perform very well. Now, these are just four. Again, you can talk with DSM Somos and develop a profile for any of their 355 nanometer resins or from any other company. Talk with us and, and the companies and we'll uh, try and get you sorted as best as we can. Now, if you are interested in any of the technologies that I've talked about today, or some of the ones that I haven't, maybe you want to know if we have different capabilities, please reach out to us. Uh, we've got information on 3D scanners, printers, SOLIDWORKS, and PDM and PLM solutions. So please go to our website, which is CATI.com. There we have blogs on all of those different product lines with different tips, tricks, and interesting things there. We have other webinars and seminars uh, at our events page. Currently, they're all going to be webinars, but once reality uh, comes back to us and we're all out and about, we will be having more live events 
in the future. Follow us on Facebook. We post different uh, updates about if we get a new machine or if we're doing something with the community like that COVID relief and just any other small updates that you have or things like that uh, uh, different webinars will be posted there. And then we also have our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash user slash C-A-T-I channel where we do post recordings of webinars and things like that there. So with